New York City's rent stabilization laws are so bad that landlords would rather keep their units empty than rent them out at the below market rent control prices. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's going over the math. The math of exactly why landlords up in New York City who own these rent control buildings, they are warehousing them. Basically, they are warehousing units. When they become empty, they are not renting them back out, and they are just keeping them empty, okay? And they're just like, the tenants are like, why in the world would a landlord do this? I mean, wouldn't some sort of rental income be better than leaving this unit empty? And the answer is no, absolutely not. In fact, it would cost them way more money than they could ever earn back. So it's a losing proposition for landlords to go in there, make a bunch of repairs, and then rent the unit out at a loss, okay? And you know what? The tenants who watch my videos, the tenants who push all these you know, rent stabilization, rent control laws, they don't understand the math. And that's why I finally found an article that goes over the math and explains why you know, landlords are doing what they're doing. And it makes sense. It makes logical sense. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you're a landlord up in New York, you own a rent control building, would you put hundred, you know, put tens of thousands of dollars in doing updates and repairs if you were unable to raise the rent? This is actually, I could ask this question for a landlord anywhere, right? But in New York, New York is, you know, one of the unique places across the country that has rent control laws in place where you would be unable to raise the rent in order to cover, cover the uh, cost of all the rehab and everything. So, you know, uh, one of the strategies that a lot of landlords use is what they call the Burr method, right? Which is buy, uh, rehab, buy, rehab, rent, repeat. Uh, I, I get it a little mixed up every once in a while, but basically what it says is you buy a property that is in kind of bad shape, right? Where the rents are below market, right? And you uh, fix up the units one at a time or all at the same time, right? And then you bring the rents up to the market rate. So this strategy does not work in a place where you're unable to raise the rents up to the market rate. If they say, oh, well, we're going to force you to keep your rents super low, and then you come in there and spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars rehabbing a building, well, guess what? You're never going to recover your investment. And that's exactly why a lot of New York landlords are leaving the places empty. So anyway, let's get into this article because I, I want to get into the, the math in the article because it's quite interesting. So anyway... This article is coming from therealdeal.com and it says, Paul polls weekend landlords vacant unit bill. Did they go too far? Pro tenant provisions leave chip with half a loaf yet scrambled to save it. There's a vacant one bedroom apartment in Morningside Heights that would make a nice home for a struggling New Yorker or a young artist or someone just out of prison who needs a fresh start. The legal rent is only $684 a month. Blessed day, Shakima Smith wrote when she saw the unit on Twitter. Is it available for rent? Nobody replied. Perhaps no one wanted to deliver the bad news. It is not available because it is not up to code and perhaps never will be. So, you know, they're, they're talking about a apartment that's for rent up in New York, right? I, I don't know the neighborhoods very well, but just keep in mind, this is in New York City, right? And the rent is only $684 a month, which even here in Omaha, Nebraska, that is extremely cheap, okay? I mean, you, you're you getting a really good deal if you're getting somewhere for $684 a month here. So in New York, I mean, that is almost unbelievable, okay? And, uh, they, they, they can't rip the place out because it's not up to code. Obviously, that means that there's, there's problems within the unit that need to be addressed, and they could probably be quite expensive. The place is a rent-controlled unit and probably had the last tenant in it for quite a while. So before the landlord would be able to rent it out again, they would have to bring it back up to code, and that might cost them tens of thousands of dollars. But let's continue. 
The, the unit is among tens of thousands trapped in a backwater of the 2019 rent law, which created new problems as it solved old ones. By limiting to $15,000 over 15 years, the amount landlords can recover from tenants to pay for upgrades. The law kept rents down, but also removed from the market apartments like the one Shakima Smith wanted. The upper Manhattan unit needs about $95,000 worth of work to be rentable, but the landlord can only raise the rent by $89 a month. It would take 90 years for that increase to pay for the renovations. So the apartment sits empty. What good is a bargain if no one can get it? And there you go. Here's the math right there, right? The law, you know, the 2019 New York rent stabilization law only allows them to uh, increase the rent by $15,000 over 15 years, not $15,000 in one year. Okay. 15 over 15 years. That's you can increase the rent a little, just tiny, itty bitty bit, less than a thousand dollars over the course of a year. So that's eighty nine dollars per month. So if the apartment was written for six hundred and eighty four dollars a month, right, you're only going to be able to raise the rents up to what is that, um, uh, seven hundred seventy three dollars a month. I mean, it's 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 a very it's still, the rent would still be way way too low, and in fact. The rent is probably so low that even if you know you did absolutely no work on it whatsoever, it would cost the landlord money every single month that it was in operation. <laughs> you know, basically he would have to he or she would have to subsidize the tenants' lit costs of living there because you know the the rental income does not cover the actual cost of you know the the mortgage, the taxes, etc. You know, that, that's how ridiculous these rent control buildings are in the first place. So there's no incentive whatsoever for the landlord to actually perform these renovations. You have to, it's going to cost 90 grand because the place was so out of code, you know, and plus, you know, construction, et cetera, costs so much in New York City. It's going to cost them 90 grand to do all the updates, yet you can only raise the rent $89 a month. And it's going to take you 90 years to cover just the cost of the updates. Not to mention, you know, what the the landlords, the reason we make these investments is to make a profit. We don't buy millions of dollars, spend millions of dollars on a building so that we can sit there and lose money every single month. That's dumb. Okay. Nobody wants to do that. So it would benefit the landlord more to keep this place empty than to put a new tenant in there. You'd have you'd be stuck with this tenant, you'd be stuck making all these repairs. And so there are thousands of units just like this all throughout New York City. And tenants, they wonder, well, why are they keeping them empty? This isn't fair. We should force them to rent them out. You can't force a landlord to spend 90 grand on bringing their units up to date. You just can't. You know, If they don't have the money, they don't have the money. And the bank isn't going to lend you money for a, a piece of property that doesn't have an income or has an income that won't pay back the loan. So you know, you've put yourself into this situation. You, I mean, you were like, oh, we're going to keep rents, our rents low, never thinking about the long-term consequences of this. And believe me, there's going to be more and more units like this as the time passes. <laughs> You're going to, you know, when I mentioned that the number of rent controlled units always declines, people, they didn't understand like, well, why, why would the number of units decline? Because one, landlords, they're not going to build new rent controlled units. <laughs> that's just dumb. <laughs> Two, the current rent controlled units are going to be converted to other uses, be it co-ops or condos, or, you know, maybe they're just going to keep them empty, like in these situations right here. So that is exactly what you can expect. And, you know, when you look at the math, it makes sense. So until the laws change, you're going to end up with this situation where there's going to be just a slowly declining number of units available. For this program, which affects 30,000 or 40,000 rentals in New York City, the Landlord Group Community Housing Improvement Program last year proposed that landlords be allowed a one-time rent hike to whatever amount they wanted, after which the in incremental increases allowed by rent stabilization would resume. The proposal was a non-starter. The state legislature 
which would never give landlords carte blanche to jack up regulated rents. So Chip asked Democrats to come up with something that they could actually pass in the pro-tenant assembly and Senate. Senator Leroy Comrie of Queens and assembly member Kenny Burgos of the Bronx did just that. In their bill, the one-time rent increase would be determined by a similar process, but stricter and more transparent than the one used when rent controlled units become stabilized. That process is not controversial and has been state law for 50 years. And basically they, they tried to come up with a solution that would allow landlords to be able to raise rents to the amount that would cover the cost of all of these rehabs, right? It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen because the tenants groups, the tenant advocates, they're in control of these legislators. And you know what, the legislators, they just wanna get reelected. They don't give a crap about the effect that it's going to actually have on housing affordability long term you know that's the problem they don't look long term they think about what, what what's happening right now right now uh, these tenants are they're not going to vote for me again unless we sit here and make sure that we never change this rent stabilization law but then 10 20 years down the line housing is even less affordable than it is now it's even harder to find these rent controlled units are slowly disappearing. People are moving out of New York City because they can't afford to live there. And, you know, rent control doesn't work. We know this. And that's why I brought this article today. And I wanted you to see the math, just like I already knew that it worked, okay?